Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making an exploding treasure chest. In today's episode we are animating the chest and making it jump up and open. If you haven't already make sure you've looked at the other episodes where I talk about the gold coins, building the treasure chest and rigging. Also if you're new to animation then do check out my animation beginner's guide playlist. And if you're completely new to Blender then check out my beginner courses and beginner playlists. Links in the description and check the playlists in the channel. Okay, so we're going to do some animation. This is really good fun. I'm going to pull this section up here. So we've got our timeline. I'm going to use this drop down here to give us all our bones and things. It will make sense when we add keyframes. Again, if you haven't already, look at my basic animations course if you're getting a bit confused with what's going on here. So I think our animation needs to start after a slight pause. So half a second pause. A second is 25 frames, depending on what you've got set in your output properties here. I've got 24. I like 25 because it's just easier to add up. 24 is film, 25 is PAL or the European standard. But 25 is the best for me because I know there's four of those and 100 and so forth. Much easier to calculate. Okay, so half a second is roughly 12. So we'll give it a pause of half a second. So a very short pause and then we'll start our animation. So it's gonna judder around a bit and then bounce upwards. So if I select all my bones and press I to inset a keyframe, you must have your mouse over the viewport. You might be able to do it down here. I, yeah, all channels, it's slightly different. So I lock rot, which is location and rotation. So there's our three bones and they've all got a keyframe and here's our summary keyframe at the top so I can move this one and it will move all the ones underneath. If I select these I can move them individually for each bone. Okay so I'll move my timeline across to frame 14 by clicking at the top here. I'm going to zoom in a bit with my mouse wheel because we don't need that many frames. So after a couple of frames it will I'll select the bottom frame and we'll rotate slightly and G to grab. So R to rotate, G to grab and it's going to move up there. I to insert keyframe lock rot. Okay, so we've got two free keyframes and it's moving between them, so it's going to shake slightly. Across to 16 after two frames and rotate it again and grab it that way. And then press I insert keyframe lock rot. So again, location rotation. You can see that my location and my rotation turn yellow over here to say they're on a keyframe. If I move to there, it shows you it's animated, but there's no keyframe on that position. So there's a bit of movement there, a bit of juddering. Now what would be easier if we turn the record button on, that will now record any movement we do. You just have to be a bit careful and remember you've got that on. <laughs> so let's move to frame 18 and just rotate it slightly and move up. I'm going to go to front view in a moment and rotate it the other way, but I'll do this side first and then to frame 20. So we've got some juddering going on here, but it's probably worth noting that I've only got bone two selected. If I select bone one here, you can see that's got a keyframe there, but the armature has other keyframes for this one. So this doesn't have a keyframe, neither the, does this on any of these other frames, but this one does. If I select them all, there you can see bone zero, one, and two there. So it'd be a good idea to go to the last keyframe, which will be 22, and copy the first one. I can se select right at the top here, it selects all the ones below it because that's the summary keybone and press shift D and move that across so it actually loops now. And from here it's going to jump upwards. So a quick jump upwards, about five frames, so one, two, three, four, five. The bottom bone, which is our movement bone, I'll use that and jump it upwards to there. Move it out just a touch to somewhere around here. And we'll rotate it slightly to about there. So it's going upwards. So a little shake, bunk. And at this point we want it to open as well, don't we? And we want it to open whilst it's jumping. So we've got this keyframe here. This one is has a keyframe. You can see it's got a keyframe at the beginning, which doesn't make much difference to here. So there's no change in here. But when we go up to here, we want it to rotate. So R to rotate, round it goes. And now we've got three keyframes, no change in this one, but a change in this one, bunk up there. Hopefully this is all making sense. It can be a bit confusing if it's the first time you've ever done keyframes, so do make sure you've checked out my beginner playlist. 
Okay, so we want it to fall back down, but stay open. So I'll click on the parent bone, cross a bit, and it's gonna fall back down. G to grab in the Z. And fall back down. Okay, so it's going up, but it looks a bit odd at the moment, and it's a little bit quick, the falling back down. Probably should be the same distance. Which is how many frames? One, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it should be there. I feel like it needs some rotation just here. So it carries on rotating backwards and then hits the floor and then it will bounce back this way. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Hopefully it will make sense. We dunk like that. And then there's some follow through where it bounces slightly and then settles down again. And some follow through, but just a tiny little movement. And then I'm going to copy the first keyframe and move it over here. So it moves back too far. So I'll move this one in between. I'll move these across slightly. Hopefully this is all making sense. So just a bit of movement there. Let's just see what that looks like. I'll set my end frame to, let's say 75. So there's a bit of a pause at the end. So it just, it moves backwards a bit too much here. Not that it matters too much if it's not in exactly the same place. So maybe I should move this one this way a bit. It's quite far really, isn't it? There we go, move that there. Move that there. There's a slight judder. It's probably a little bit too much at the end here. So tiny bits of adjustment. So the last thing to do then is to look from the front. So it looks all very rigid, doesn't it? So we need a bit of shaking here as well. Okay, let's see what that looks like. That looks all right, doesn't it? Probably needs to go up a bit higher, doesn't it? So we can change this point in here and just press G then Z. There we go. Now the last thing you might want to change is the look of the inside. It's a little bit sharp around here. So back into object mode with my bones, control tab, select the bottom and into edit mode and then just Go around each of these edges, selecting them with Alt, left click. I'll isolate the shape actually with forward slash, so it'll be easier to select these back ones. I think there's a few in here which are a little bit awkward to get. I think we've got them all now. Control B to bevel. Now you can only go so far really because there's a bit of overlap here, so we might have to just go in and grab these. So GG to edge slide and slide them all into each other. And then we've got no problems. I mean, you could select them all and then Alt M to merge at center. That one seems a bit more tricky though. So let's just try and sort these out. So I'm just grabbing them and merging them into each other. Let's turn snapping on and make sure auto merge is on. Auto merge is on. G to snap. That's better, isn't it? Yeah, much easier with snapping on. There we go. And that's snapping to vertex up the top here. So snap to vertex and they'll snap to each other. There we go, we can add a bit of, oh, I <laughs> turned snapping off. We can add a little bit of distortion then. There we go, it looks a little bit better now. 
forward slash out of isolation mode. Let's turn the overlays off and then let's see what our animation looks like. Ta-da! What fun. Okay, so in the next episode, we'll be talking about how we can add the coins to this with all the physics and rigid bodies involved. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.